Hello, everyone, today, we have a remarkable and inspiring topic to discuss. We'll be diving into the incredible stories of individuals who defied the odds and emerged as some of the luckiest survivors of accidents. From near-death experiences to astonishing strokes of luck, these stories remind us of the indomitable human spirit. But before we begin, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an inspiring video like this one. Let's get started. Number 10 Frank Selick Frank Selick was a music teacher in the former Yugoslavia he is known as one of the world's luckiest men. Due to numerous accidents and near-death experiences. In 1962, a train derailment resulted in the deaths of 17 passengers. While Selick walked away with only minor injuries. In 1963, a plane crash in which a door malfunction caused 19 passengers to plummet to their deaths. But Selick survived after being blown clear of the aircraft wreckage. In 1970, a bus accident where the bus he was on skidded off the road into a river, killing four passengers, but Selick escaped with minor injuries. In 1995, his own car caught fire, which he survived by rolling down a hill to extinguish the flames. After surviving these life-threatening incidents, Selick won the Croatian lottery in 2003, reportedly earning around $1 million, USD. This event added to his reputation as the world's luckiest man. Number 9 Ernest Shackleton's Endurance Crew Ernest Shackleton's Endurance Crew refers to the group of men who embarked on the ill-fated Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition in 1914 under the leadership of Sir Ernest Shackleton. The crew of the Endurance consisted of 27 men, including scientists, sailors, and support personnel. In 1915, the crew of Ernest Shackleton's ship, the Endurance, found themselves stranded in Antarctica after their ship was trapped and eventually crushed by ice. Shackleton's leadership during this period was crucial. He kept the crew's morale high, maintained discipline, and made incredibly tough decisions to ensure their survival. In April 1916, after months on the ice, Shackleton and a small crew set out in a lifeboat, the James Caird, on an epic journey to reach South Georgia Island, where they hoped to find help. This journey was fraught with danger but ultimately successful. Number 8 Roy Sullivan Roy Sullivan was working as a park ranger in Shenandoah National Park Roy Sullivan survived an astounding total of seven documented lightning strikes during his lifetime. These lightning strikes occurred at various times between 1942 and 1977, earning him a place in the Guinness World Records for most lightning strikes survived by one person. In 1942, Sullivan's first documented lightning strike occurred when he was in a fire lookout tower. The lightning bolt hit him, searing off his big toenail and leaving a nasty burn. Roy Sullivan's seventh and final lightning strike occurred in 1977 when he was fishing in a freshwater pool. The lightning strike left him with chest and stomach burns. Tragically, Roy Sullivan did not die as a result of a lightning strike. On September 28, 1983, at the age of 71, he died by suicide. Number 7 Ricky Meji In January 2006, Ricky Meji's life took a dramatic turn when he became stranded in the Australian outback under extremely challenging circumstances. He claims to have been drugged, robbed, and left for dead by a group of strangers. According to Meji, he survived for a total of 71 days in the Australian outback. Without access to adequate food, water, or shelter. He survived by living off roadkill and creek water, adapting to the harsh environment. In April 2006, Ricky Meji was discovered by two indigenous stockmen on a remote cattle station near the Northern Territory in Queensland border. He was severely emaciated and in a weakened state. Number 6 Mauro Prosperi In 1994, Mauro Prosperi, an experienced marathon runner and police officer from Italy, participated in the Marathon des Sables. During the race, a severe sandstorm struck the Sahara Desert, leading to extreme conditions with high winds and limited visibility. Due to the sandstorm, Prosperi and other participants became disoriented and lost their way in the desert. Prosperi's survival skills and resilience played a crucial role in his ability to endure the harsh desert conditions. He dug a hole in the sand to seek shelter from the scorching sun and used urine to keep himself hydrated. After being lost in the desert for several days, Mauro Prosperi was eventually spotted by a nomadic family who provided him with water and shelter. A search and rescue operation was launched to locate him, and he was eventually airlifted to safety. Number 5 Aaron Ralston Aaron Ralston is an American outdoorsman, engineer, and motivational speaker known for his incredible survival story, which was later adapted into the 2010 film, 127 Hours, directed by Danny Boyle on April 26, 2003. Aaron Ralston embarked on a solo canyoneering expedition in Blue John Canyon. 
part of the remote Canyonlands National Park in Utah while descending a narrow slot canyon. A large boulder became dislodged and fell, pinning Aaron Ralston's right forearm against the canyon wall. Despite his efforts, he was unable to free himself from the crushing weight of the boulder. He was effectively trapped in a remote and isolated location. Aaron Ralston made an agonizing and life-altering decision. With no hope of rescue and facing certain death, if he remained trapped, he amputated his own right forearm using the dull multi-tool. This courageous and drastic measure allowed him to escape from the canyon. Number 4 Harrison Okin Harrison Okin is a Nigerian man who survived a harrowing ordeal after his ship, the Jaskon 4, capsized and sank off the coast of Nigeria in 2013. His story of survival is often referred to as one of the most incredible maritime rescues in history. On May 26, 2013, the Jaskon 4, a tugboat working in the offshore oil industry, capsized during a heavy storm in the Gulf of Guinea, about 32 kilometers, 20 miles, off the coast of Nigeria. Harrison Okin, the ship's cook, was the only known survivor among the 12 crew members on board. After the boat sank, he found himself trapped in an air pocket in a small compartment of the ship, which prevented him from being swept away by the strong currents and drowning. For the next three days, Harrison Okin remained in the air pocket, in complete darkness, with only a small supply of Coca-Cola to sustain him. He had no way of communicating with the outside world and could only wait for rescue. On the third day, a team of divers from a South African salvage company, DCN Global, arrived at the scene. One of the divers, identified as Nico Van Heerden, was conducting a routine search of the ship when he came across Okin in the pitch black compartment. The rescue operation was challenging due to the depth of the water and the strong currents. After hours of careful planning, Okin was brought to the surface. Number 3 Julianne Kopka On December 24, 1971, 17-year-old Julianne, along with her mother Maria and 90 other passengers and crew members, boarded Lanza Flight 508, a Lockheed L-188A Electra, in Lima, Peru. Approximately 45 minutes into the flight, the aircraft encountered severe thunderstorms and lightning. Lightning struck the plane, causing it to break apart in mid-air. Julianne was seated in row 19 next to her mother, but she was separated from her mother as the aircraft disintegrated. Julianne plummeted nearly 10,000 feet 3, meters, to the ground still strapped to her seat, which acted as a makeshift parachute. Remarkably, she survived the freefall, albeit with severe injuries. After regaining consciousness, Julianne found herself alone in the dense Amazon rainforest. She had suffered a broken collarbone, a gash on her leg, and a swollen eye, among other injuries. She managed to find a small stream and followed it downstream in hopes of finding help or civilization. After several days of walking and surviving on rainwater and small fruits, Julianne came across an abandoned cabin. She took shelter there and found some supplies, including a knife. Julianne continued her journey through the jungle, following a river and searching for signs of civilization. She encountered various challenges, including injuries, insects, and harsh weather conditions. After an arduous 11-day ordeal in the jungle, Julianne was eventually found by local lumbermen on January 3, 1972. They provided her with assistance and took her to a nearby village, where she received medical care. Julianne's rescue led to a search for the wreckage of the plane. Tragically, her mother, Maria Kopka, did not survive the crash. Number 2 Li Yiji Li Yiji was working in a quarry in the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region of China when a landslide hit. He was buried under 10 meters, 33 feet, of mud and rocks. He survived by breathing through a small pocket of air and drinking the water that seeped into his makeshift shelter. After eight days, Li Yiji was able to dig himself out of the rubble. He was rescued by a team of firefighters and taken to a hospital, where he was treated for injuries including a broken leg and a concussion. Li Yiji's story is one of incredible survival and resilience. He is considered to be one of the luckiest people in the world. After his rescue, Li Yiji said that he was grateful to be alive and that he would never take life for granted again. He also said that he wanted to help other people who had been affected by landslides. At number 1 Vesna Vilovic. On January 26, 1972, Vesna Vilovic was on board Jot Flight 367. A McDonnell Douglas District of Columbia 9, which was en route from Stockholm, Sweden, to Belgrade, Yugoslavia. The flight was uneventful until it reached cruising altitude over Czechoslovakia. Tragically, a bomb detonated on board the aircraft while it was at cruising altitude. The explosion caused the plane to break apart at an altitude of approximately 33,000 feet, about 10,000 meters. Vesna Vilovic was the sole survivor of the crash, and she miraculously survived a freefall without a parachute. 
Vesna Vilovic fell to the ground in a heavily wooded and snow-covered area near the village of Esarbiska Kamenice in Czechoslovakia. Her fall was cushioned by trees, and she landed on a slope covered with deep snow, which likely helped absorb the impact of the fall. Despite the incredible circumstances of her survival, Vesna Vilovic did not escape the incident unscathed. She suffered multiple injuries, including fractures to her skull, legs, and pelvis, as well as partial paralysis due to a spinal injury. Local villagers found Vesna Vilovic shortly after the crash and alerted authorities. She was rescued and transported to a hospital for medical treatment. Let us know in the comments below which story inspired you most. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found these stories as awe-inspiring as we did. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video.